So you have this gentleman who's been spun up by an intelligence officer from, I don't know what agency, because it doesn't say on his website, all it says is an intelligence officer. And he's teaching these people to do these, whatever that they were trying to do um, for his traffic, you know, to, to engage with the public safety officers who are in a martial law theater, and, you know, and they know at the top end that they're in martial law, but they don't know the dynamics. They've never heard of the Whitestone Foundation. They don't. They don't know about the treaties that the Vatican and the uh, Mormon Church did in 2009, 2010. So they don't know any of that stuff. They just know that they get to go around and do whatever they want. Unfortunately, there's a, there's somebody spun up calling himself a national, which is an adjective pronoun. There's no such thing. It's very unfortunate the technique that this man was taught, because first of all, when you're in a martial law theater. The public safety officers were asking for his ship's papers, his credentials, right? What is he using to navigate himself? Because during times of war, the public safety officers, which are a martial law theater, it's a martial law brigade of the Unified Police, it's a gang, that gang of thugs are searching for papers. And so the papers that the gentleman presented, how he, what I witnessed on the webcam what he, from the police officers is, he didn't have good technique, was not very sound in how he approached them. First of all, with the claim of the life system, we're all neutral, right? We're peaceful. So it's okay to talk to the police officers. It's okay to give them full closure. It's okay to give them an education, right? They're, they're there because we're allowing them to be in that space because we have to claim, we have to be able to identify ourselves in that place. This was last Wednesday in Farmington when an officer noticed that blue BMW didn't have an official license plate and started to pull the driver over. Police, reason for the stop today is there's no registration on your vehicle. The driver, Chase Allen, wouldn't identify himself to the officer or give any vehicle registration. No registration and don't answer questions. This went on a few times. Are you going to provide me your identification? I don't answer questions. Okay, so I'm going to take that as a no that you're not going to provide me your identification. Eventually, Allen gave the officer a passport that identified him as Chase Allen. Thank you so much, Mr. Chase Allen. That is not me. That is a piece of plastic paper. So you have a fraudulent passport? No. The officer then told Allen to get out of the car. Okay, step out of the car for me. No. And when he didn't, another officer started trying to get him out. That escalation of force from verbal to hands-on, in my opinion, is, was absolutely reasonable and appropriate. Officers noticed Allen move his cell phone from one hand to the other and move his other hand in the direction of the gun in a holster on his hip. Gun, 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 gun. Five officers shot at Allen several times. They tried helping him with first aid after the shooting, but he died. Officers found the gun on the floor of the car. I say it's just a, a tragic ending to what started out as as an everyday traffic stop. The proverbial routine traffic stop ended in tragedy. Welcome to Organic Healthy Lifestyle. Beautiful people, and I love you so much. I'm Nancy Addison, your host, and I always shout, start off my show with a prayer and I ask you to join me in whichever way you would like. And I just ask our divine creator to please allow your love for us to extinguish any fear that we may have. Enable us to become quiet and focused on your spirit of divine love. Help us to feel the waves of peace washing over us and clearing away any tenseness and anxiety. We rediscover how refreshing it feels to be calm and peaceful. Alone with your presence, we feel a great serenity. We know that we are eternally one with the divine and with the divine with us, and we shall fear nothing. We are claiming and declaring your promises and gratefully accept your gifts of strength fortitude, flexibility, compassion, wisdom, insight, and perfect health. 
Bring peace into our souls that passes all worldly understanding and makes us a light for others to see your strength. We ask this in the highest good of all concern for everyone listening now and for everyone listening in the future. And thank you. And so it is. Today we have, we are honored to have the Postmaster General of the World, Full Colin Russell, hyphen J, Full Colin Gould. Welcome to the show, Russell. It's nice to be here, Nancy. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for joining us. We are honored. And this is Russell's fourth time to be on my show. So if y'all want to catch up on any of the things we've talked about in the past, you can find those on our, our older podcasts. But today, Russell and I have been discussing, and and it's been very, very sad, that there's been a situation in the United States where a young man has been shot. And so I'm going to call, I'm going to call Full Call and Russell Chief, because I'm a part of his Claim of Life group, and that's what we call him in our group. <laughs> and so I'm going to address him as chief because he is the postmaster general of the world. So, Russell, I, I know this is something very near and dear to your heart and very sad, and, and I'd love for you to talk about Chase Allen, the little 25-year-old young man in Farmington, Utah, and, and what has happened to him recently. Sure, sure. So... As your audience or my audience knows, um, for many years, for eight years, I drove around with no license plates and no driver's license, all in quantum grammar. And so I have a lot of knowledge about how to conduct yourself at traffic situations because from 1996 to 2007, I was the poster child of being drug out of a car by the cops, you know, you know being pushed off the road by their, their cars, uh, tasered, maced, uh, been through a lot of traffic situations, never to the extreme of being shot, but I did things different. And so um, it's unfortunate and it's, it's very sensitive on the Allen family. My condolences to them and what the grief of loss of life, because when you lose a loved one, it, it actually really hurts inside. And so... so we need to give them space instead of pressing up on them and let them go through their grieving process for sure. But some of the things that really concerned me and my audience and some of my students was, you know, what happened here? What exactly happened with this situation with Mr. Allen uh, being shot at a traffic, as a traffic stop? Uh, Mr. Allen is part of a group um, led by uh, David Stray. And David Lester Stray is an intelligence officer on his website, he says he works for an agency. He doesn't say which one he works for, so I'm not sure who's spinning up who here and, you know, the techniques that we've given that we all witnessed on the body cameras of the police officers who, who you know, were doing their task of what they are. So there's several things going on here. There's Mr. Allen navigating himself through space, and there's also the unincorporated Salt Lake City Police Department, uh, Unified Police. Well, so we have to comprehend, first of all, where are we at, right? For, right? Before we can get into subject matter, we have to figure out where we're at, right? So let's do a little background for the audience. So in 1858, Brigham Young, who was leader of a Mormon culture of faith, uh, was leading his, his people, and he was captured by the U.S. Cal Calvary in 1858. So Utah, or the Mormon Church, was given three cities. They were given, the, well, they were given the whole state at that point. But when the United States government came out of international bankruptcy in 1999, all statehoods dissolved, which means that none of the states published their own money within the, under the two-year moratorium to maintain their statehood. So all states became null and void. And so the Mormon Church cut a deal with the Vatican, and they did this in 2009, 2010. And this was one year after, see, as key master of the Vatican, I have many secrets, right? My fortunes are my secrets. And some of my secrets are 
knowing where pinpointing geographic positioning of cargo of, of vessels, right? This uh, postmaster general world. These are the the techniques that I know. So when the United States government came out of bankruptcy in 1999, when the United States got when the United States Inc. and the United States of America and the United States of Constitution, Constitution of the United States of America ended, there were no guidelines really to set up spatial position because the law of the flag, David, uh, Hyphen, Winkle, and Miller, and myself had already taken the ability for anyone to use the flag to set up terms of contract on August 12, 1999. So when they came out on November 2nd, 1999, they didn't have a flag, so they had to go rogue. Right? And so that's what the United States Inc. did and the United States of America did, is they went rogue. Well, part of that translated, because none of the states published their own money under the two-year moratorium of salvage of contract for money, none of the 50 states published their own money because they could no longer use the birth certificates as collateral. So what the, what, in 2008, I was w conducting the world's largest court-martialing. Uh, corporation case R period R period till the three eight five till the four six zero till the three one two colon U period S period, and I was conducting a a laboratory function on precious metals in Mapleton, Utah. And when I got to Utah, because I knew the secrets of the United States government ending and how the church was in control of the ley lines, and the ley lines are the the what they use in Utah, the space coordinates for creating. Um, Spatial cognition or spatial positioning of matter, with such as cars, people, on the land, defining land. Utah is not on the prime meridian. They're not on the township. There's no uh, range. There's there's none of that. They're not in the prime meridian. They're on the where they were on the Salt Lake City baseline, which is a architectural design coming off of the temple downtown Salt Lake. And so I rewrote, I found that their construct for positioning matter for ley lines was fraudulently conveyed, which means all the charters of the Mormon church were written in adverb verb, which means they said nothing. They were in violation of Title 18, 1001, fictitious grammar. They said nothing. So I went down to the Mormon church and I presented Gould's hyphen Salt Lake City hyphen baseline because I needed to go up into my national forest and, and dig a hole. I was, I was getting platinum out of the ground at that time up in Pine Creek. And so in order to do that, I had to set up a different jurisdiction of space. Well, when I did that, the head of the architect department for the Mormon church, because they were interested in, number one, the knowledge that I was conveying, because they didn't know I was postmaster general. I had to prove that, and I showed them my credentials. And we, well, they came to see me, actually, where I was staying, and they spent literally 30 days with me in the Antiquities Department on asking me questions about my position as key master, what it means to reconstruct ley lines, how that actually works. And so I shared with them some secrets that in their secret societies, they knew about those secrets, but they didn't know how to use them. They were only taught the secrets, but now they were seeing an application of how to use that in the theater. So after I published One Year, One Day, nothing becomes law, contract law for One Year, One Day, the Salt Lake City became an unincorporated function, and they created the Salt Lake City Unified Police in 2009. So, and the Salt Lake City Unified Police Department, right? Because they moved jurisdictional boundaries because Utah didn't exist anymore. At that point, they cut a deal with the, with the Vatican, and they slid the state of Utah under the Homestead Act, giving the Mormon Church, Provo, Ogden, and Salt Lake City. Right? Because it's not on the prime meridian. So the the function of claiming a driver's license, it, it, it all went through a different paradigm, not part of any other paradigm on culture on planet Earth. They had their own paradigm. And to this day, the, the Unified Police is a martial law system, right? And the people that were conducting and brokering the contract were the United States Defense Intelligence Agency, the DIA. They were the ones in charge of brokering the deal between the Vatican in the Mormon Church. Well, the Mormon Church is run by, in the alchemical world, by a group called the White Stone Foundation. The White Stone Foundation is a secret society of international bankers that focus on unstable matter and what we call the Shinana, the Bin Bin, the monoatomics. And they are in control of the purse strings of what they call Zion Bank. In the deal with the Mormons getting Salt Lake City 
Provo and Ogden. They also were, the Vatican gave them charge of the gold, and there was a, the Whitestone Foundation at that time was running around the world, and they were like buying like 300 metric tons of gold. They were, they, they were doing a lot of crazy things back then uh, to stay in control and position equity behind the concept of their faith. Um, very dangerous group, Whitestone Foundation. You, in fact, you you could not even find them anywhere online. It's a very, very in club. Um, they approached me because of what I was doing with unstable matter and monotonic hieroglyphics. So that's how I got to meet that group. Um, but all of this is relevant to this traffic stop, right? So you have this gentleman who's been spun up by an intelligence officer from I don't know what agency because it doesn't say on his website. All it says is an intelligence officer. And he's teaching these people to do these, whatever that they were trying to do um, for his traffic, you know, to, to engage with the public safety officers who are in a martial law theater. And, you know, and they know at the top end that they're in martial law, but they don't know the dynamics. They've never heard of the Whitestone Foundation. They don't, they don't know about the treaties that the Vatican and the um, Mormon Church did in 2009, 2010. So they don't know any of that stuff. They just know that they get to go around and do whatever they want. Unfortunately, there's, a, there's somebody spun up calling himself an American national, which is an adjective pronoun. There's no such thing. And they find themselves at my post office, right? In my, in my post office lot, not even knowing where they're at in, in time and space. And it's very unfortunate, the technique that this man was taught. Because first of all, when you're in a martial law theater, the public safety officers were asking for his ship's papers, his credentials, right? What is he using to navigate himself? Because during times of war, the public safety officers, which are a martial law theater, but it's a martial law brigade called the Unified Police, it's a gang, that gang of thugs are searching for papers. And so the papers that the gentleman presented, how he, what I witnessed on the webcam what he, from the police officers is, he didn't have good technique, was not very sound in how he approached them. First of all, with claim of the life system, we're all neutral, right? We're peaceful. So it's okay to talk to the police officers. It's okay to give them full closure. It's okay to give them an education, right? They're, they're there because we're allowing them to be in that space because we have to claim, we have to be able to identify ourselves in that. This gentleman was unable to identify himself because his, whatever he handed out did not meet the criteria of what they were wanting. And then foolishly, very foolishly, and I don't know, you know, is the gun a plant? I don't know, right? I, I'm just going off of what I'm seeing here. I have a lot of, there's a lot of skeptical things here, right? If somebody gets shot that much in that close, where was all the blood, right? There's a, there's a few things to me that are a little unsettling about the scene that I saw from the, from the body cams of, of the police officer. So I don't know, was the, was the gun planted? But the one thing that I encourage society in general. It's always stay peaceful. First of all, no one's smart enough to go to war, which means no one's really smart enough to be carrying a safety tool, a gun in a, in a martial law theater unless they have the right, right credentialing. So whatever happened in that guy's mind and whoever spun that man up is the culpable liability co-conspirator in this, in this homicide, right? Because it is definitely this man... I don't know if he was aggressive towards the cops. I really can't tell. But whoever taught him to do whatever it is that he's doing is, is not very wise because they should have contacted the, the DIA, the Defense Intelligence Agency, and found, found out where they're at in time and space, right? Because you certainly wouldn't be claiming to be a state national in a position where you're on a different ley line. Ley lines are what they use to measure cargo as it moves and vessels as it moves through space. And this man demonstrated, Mr. Allen demonstrated none of those skill sets that were necessary to give full closure to the gang that pulled him over. Now, he, when I looked at the video and examining the video on his vessel, automobile, he was flying um, the peace flag, or the, actually the commerce flag. And I was, I'm kind of curious on why he was doing that. You know, I've, I don't know because I copyrighted that flag in 2007, and I haven't given anybody authorization to use it. So I'm trying to figure out why they were using it, and uh, um, 
you know, there's a lot of culprits out here that uh, have brought my flag out without asking my permission. And uh, so it's uh, interesting. That's another interesting faux pas. The fact that he would be on my postal lands when he got pulled over and wasn't able to identify it. First rule of contract is to know where you're at in time and space, have knowledge of contract. So Mr. Allen definitely dis displayed a lot of lack of knowledge of where he was in the Mormon culture in the Salt Lake City baseline. And the, the guidelines for that coming off of uh, Gould Salt Lake City baseline, copyrighted in 2008 at the Temple Square. So it's a, it's a very puzzling thing to watch people make comments about this subject. And it's a very delicate thing because the family, there is a tragedy here, so it appears. So hopefully the world can take a step back and now study the mechanics of what this man did at, at the traffic stop. You know, who told him to do those foolish things? I, do, I don't know, right? Why would you say you're a state national when in 1999, no states published their own commerce under the Maritime Commerce Act for salvage to salvage statehoods. Why did no states publish their own money? And now somebody's trying to claim it at a later date. None of that makes, none of that works. So why would you do it? Unless you were spun up by someone who is an intelligence officer uh, for something. You know, who, who knows what? Right? So these are, these are dangerous questions. And... Those are things that I'm a little concerned about for the general public is who's telling these people to act unpeacefully? Who's telling them to come out of neutrality and, and not be a neutral vessel? Who, who's telling them to fly, fly my flag on their vessels? I have not authorized the commerce flag to be used anywhere. So I have the Title IV flag and I have the commerce flag, right? Anna von Reitz didn't come along and learn anything until 2010. Very new into the theater. The copyrights on the civil civil peace flag or commerce flag had already been filed in 2007 by Colin Edwards, by James Colin Edwards and myself in August of 2007. Now at that time, I was traveling around in my automobile with no license, no license plates. But I had underwrote myself with gold and I had my own surety bonds. And one of the things that I learned in 1995 when I was in traffic courts was a judge said, you know, Russell, he said it if you can prove self-surety to up to $10 million, you don't have, have to have insurance, but you have to prove liquidity. So at the time that I was mailing myself around with my, in my vessels, I had gold mines and I had tangible things, things that work hard rock mining, that I could prove a $10 million asset for surety, what they would call, the fiction would call it insurance, because right? you don't want to bump another vessel because there's liability issues on the high seas. So there's a lot of questions there that are why Mr. Allen didn't have any of those paperwork as well. Right? There's a lot of things as, as Chief Judge of the United States, I'm, I'm witnessing a total disaster on, on you know, you have the, the, the police who are using fiction grammar, not, use, not asking questions correct to the, to the victim inside Mr. Allen. You have Mr. Allen showing a lack of knowledge all the way around. And so it's, it's I, you know, the general public needs to be very cautious before they start making comments and throwing stones. They better figure out where they're at in time and space, or you're going to look lost to those of us who know, right? And yeah. so the, 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 the police officers who did this will get away with this, right? Because the family does lack knowledge. They actually think they're in Salt Lake, right? And that's not how it really works. They're on a baseline system functioning in co cohorts in concert with the Vatican. So this is very dangerous, and the, and the Whitestone Foundation is running the whole thing on the top end of that thing. So it's a very dangerous situation. Um, I, I would encourage the family members to contact the Defense Intelligence Agency to make sure you get enough knowledge before you start running into the courtrooms down in Salt Lake. You don't know what you're doing, period. Chief? This is something that I, I know a lot of people wonder about. And I know many, many people around the world are wanting to remove themselves from the mafia bankers hold. And to get themselves out, they don't always know about you. And they've covered up what you have done 
pretty well. It's not like they're talking about it on Main Street television. No, 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 no. The, the, look, the, 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 the podcasters globally are working against me, right, for sure. Because right? they don't want, they have to relearn and become accountable because of the grammar makes everybody accountable for their thinking. Right. right. So it brings a level of accountability. The podcasters are all in on it. You know, if you think the clowns and actions and the fumbling, bumbling and idiots and I have a good connection and we're like real on face to face, good, good friend level, you can think again. Most of the time it's a fist fight. It's the ugly situations. They don't have authorization to be in my now space. They know it. And they know that, that the levels that I've taken this to, which is on a macro level, much more than they could imagine. Right. Because I had to look at the dynamics of changing the whole financial system out on a global level to rewrite the quantum system, which took me, you know, 28 years to do. It was not an easy task. And I had to learn a lot of things that, uh, quite frankly, was a crime against me just to have to learn the stuff, just to navigate through, so I wouldn't end up like Mr. Allen, right? He still thinks he's in Salt Lake, you know? So that way I wouldn't get lost in time and space. And I remember... Um, in 2006, I had some sheriffs, and I was in a holding cell. And their joke to me is they're like, you know, Russell, thank goodness you know where you're at, because if you don't know where you're at in time and space, you're going to get lost. And then they turn around and look at all the other people in the building, and they're like, look at all these lost people. They, we laugh about it back and forth, but I thought about what that, what that sheriff was saying to me. Now, what does that mean? Find yourself in the time and space. Well, part of that comes into the concept of quantum. And quantum brings things down to its least common denominator of a space or of a moment, right? And so it's comprehending where you're at in that space and what kind of usury attachments are on that space. So to answer your question, a lot of people don't know how to get out of their usuries. Well, they have to start re-engineering. And we started with that for the claim of the life.com with the claim of the life, right? Which is we start re-engineering and structuring your world because I can't structure your world. I can show you a buoy system, but it's up to you to navigate it. I don't have to. I built a system beautifully enough that I don't have to police. It polices itself through accountability, through correctness, right? People can spot out liars in this venue real easy by their performances. And so there's been a lot of bad actors, sure, within the, within the venue that have popped up through the years, but they don't have the rules of the continuance of evidence. They don't know any of the secrets or the stories behind where they're at in the space. Each location around the world is a little bit different, depending on the usury of the financial tools that established that venue in the first place. What I did is I got out of the attachments of those usuries for those banking institutions, those banking families, and this is what frustrates them about me is I don't have to use their concept and drag their wealth over to allow the people to be free. And so the people to be free is based upon their education. I know it's a very scary thing right now. We're seeing things in the world with these banks. People are very nervous about that. Encourage everybody to sit back. Don't panic, number one. Don't rush into things. And start restructuring your own lives with your claim of the life, right? Skidding yourself prepared to be in the world, but not of the world. What does that mean, Nancy? How do we be in the world and not of the world? Because the world is so corporate, right? And this is, uh, I'm doing a workshop down in Clearwater, Florida on April 2nd through the, through the 4th. And that is the main theme of the contract, um, the, of the whole workshop, is to be in the world and not of the world. Because the world is a corporate world out here, set up through our corporate birth certificates. So we have a claim of the life, right? And that claim of the life has a corporation number on it. And that corporation number is a, is a position, like a line that came from in the world, but now we can pull the facts into our space, and that world no longer exists. Because fact and fiction can never meet, because there's no such thing as fiction. There's only a fact. Right, because there's no such thing as state of California, right? Pronoun, adverb, verb. Show me the verb California for location, geographic location anywhere in any dictionary in the world as a verb. Doesn't exist. Country of Nigeria, same thing. Pronoun, adverb, verb. Show me the verb location of Nigeria. Well, there's no such thing. 
You can do the same thing with New Zealand, adjective pronoun. You have two nouns coming together, the concept of new and the concept of Zealand. Right? When we write a check to somebody, we write it 30 hyphen 5. Numbers are nouns. New Zealand is a noun. Why isn't the hyphen there? If I were to take out the, hy the hyphen between 30 hyphen 5, then I create 30 space 5, otherwise known as subjective interpretation, which are adjectives, creating a position of, con a position of controversy. So punctuation on your syntax and the order of operation of how you use words controls the venue that you're in. So the factual venue of factual claimants now moves into a position where it's established as a fact. It's the only thing that is there because there's no such thing as fiction. Now they may be engaged in some sort of usury, but the claimants in my system know how to become a postmaster with that usury and maneuver themselves out of harm's way so that they can control the shipping lanes. That's what I did is I took over the shipping lanes, the ley line system of planet Earth. And this is when I, some of the meetings that I did when I was in the banks in Europe and the banks around the world is, you know, the questions were about always the navigation, of course, and controlling the ley lines. And this is what I figured out is they were using a ley line system under architectural design to control us. And I took their capacity, the fiction world's capacity to create ceremony, as well as create the function of the position to authorize corporate structure to be on in a space. So it's a very unique thing what I've done. It's never actually been done in the history of planet Earth. And when I was at the Universal Pulse Union in June 18th of 2003, meeting with the top three people in the world on shipping, they told me that I had created a solitary jurisdiction that had never been looked at in the history of planet Earth and that I was to run it. I said, well, I built it, so I'm going to build it to fix and bring solutions and allow people to put solutions on the table for their fellow mankind. Because when we communicate and we honor the communication, then we don't go to war. So these are nice tools to use to end wars. I'm someone that can be brought in to end wars if, if people so choose to. Right? If they don't they, they can try to end it in fiction, but how can you how can fiction even exist to make make a claim? There's no such thing as fiction. And so we have to be careful on these words that we use, and this is where the quantum grammar comes into place, and the, how it's so fun to use to translate in and out of all languages in the world. It's really cool. So, but back to you know the, the unfortunate si situation with Ms. Mr. Allen, Chase Allen, and you know his mom's in the middle of things too. It looks like, and who knows what that looks like? Because again, she thinks she's in Salt Lake, right? She doesn't realize that she's in a martial law theater. She needs to contact the DIA immediately to get the necessary full closure about what's happened between the Vatican and the Mormon Church and how the state of Utah is under the Homestead Act. And in Salt Lake City, you're under Gould Salt Lake City baseline. So you need to use nouns as nouns and facts as facts, or you're not going to get very far. So. Chief, if, if you were talking to someone in our group and they were getting stopped by a policy enforcer what how would you how would you recommend that they respond well what has already happened is if they're in my group they've completed step seven which means they've registered their claim of the wife with their department of transportation for the states and as well as department of transportation on a federal level so the order of operation of the public safety officer is going to be much different and we're having a lot of success where people are being pulled over and not being pulled over uh, simply because they're talking about being countable on grammar because they can't enter into contract on a citation because a lot of, like, if this Texas state being a pronoun of being an adverb, making Texas a verb. Well, there's no such thing as Texas as a verb. And the police officers are learning this. And you have to comprehend, I have a huge judicial history with the police offices and police sheriff's departments and federal marshals around the former United States. It's, this is applied application. They know exactly who I am. I have made many friends and I have many enemies, right? You can't please them all. And you got to comprehend. Public safety officers are trained under the good guy, bad guy scenario. So it's always a PSYOP, right? 
some 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 are really hung up on the power and control. You have to learn how to change the spirit of who you are. So as they come up, you position that peaceful neutrality in your heart to find the end goals that you want to achieve for the traffic stop. Right? I don't want to autograph the, the, the citation. I want to be able to talk, be accountable here and talk about grammar. Right? We're, we're going to talk to them about grammar. So, so a lot of times what happens, because we've already taken the steps to get full closure, the, the cops are like, hey, what does this mean? You're a postmaster? What's this claim of life? We've had a lot of police officers and sheriffs and highway patrol very recently talk about just the claim of the life system and how to be accountable. And they're, they're all for accountability and they hope it, it speeds up and people do become accountable because it's a lot less work for the police officers when you have honesty and accountability in the general, in the general public. All right, so you make the, the officers, which is a, are in a tough spot, if the public safety officers are in a real tough spot, number one, all sheriffs in the United States are paid through the International Monetary Fund through Homeland Security. So all their paychecks are being paid off from offshore entities. So they're not part of, you know, the United States. But how could they be? There is no United States. Right? So when you look on the pay stubs for sheriffs and police departments, and you look at the pay line on the bottom, it's not actually a line. If you look under, under a microfish and under, under a microscope, it's an actually a sentence about giving a signature and pay order by the International Monetary Fund. So it's been a takeover, very secretively against society. But the good news is, is the people that took them over, that's who I, that's who I went after their bank charters and have been, been neutralizing their capacity to harm mankind for a number of years. So that, that's what I've been up to is the ones that are playing the dirty games against the general public. They don't have the capacity anymore to throw stones at the general public to state a claim. So organizations like the Fraudulent World Health Organization, that's a thing of the past, right? They don't have any authorization now. The United Nations, I met with the head of the United Nations, Postal Administration, Robert Gray, in April of 2003. He told me, Russell, the United Nations is a fraudulent organization that has zero authorization to exist as a corporation. We can't read and write. And so they know exactly what's going on. The general public, thanks to, like you were saying earlier, Nancy, the podcasters and all the concert against me, right? That's fine. Facts don't lie. And liars never figure. And whoever taught that man to do whatever the heck he was doing in that traffic stop, that's what I'm talking about. The lies, that's what they figure out to be. You get shot, you get killed. It's very sad because a lot of the policy enforcers, or some people would call them the police, are really truly really not even aware of the bankruptcy of the United States or you or mm -hmm. anything. And I think in many ways, when I have to speak with people, it is all about educating them. And frequently they their heads start spinning and they, they don't know what I'm talking about, but well, education, to edu to education does take some work, <laughs> right? It, it, it's, it's not that there's a reason why you don't know. You don't know until you find out, right? Cause you have to learn. It's called learning. And that's really actually the fun of learning. We need to put more emphasis in that because as society, we're losing sight of how fun it is to learn things, how fun it is. Cause when you learn things, now you can be creative on what you've learned. And you can improve the qualities of your lives. You can improve the qualities of your situations. Well, and you're the master at that. I just, you I, know, I've, so I've many been, talents. Been very... It's really quite, quite astounding. But I, I do want to tell everyone around the world, you can, wherever you are, do Russell's Claim of the Life program. And I've listened to many of his talks where he speaks with people all over the world, giving them advice and weeks and months later they come back on the show and say you know we impl implemented what the chief said and everything just turned out you know wonderfully well it's it's amazing how you know the, you know people stopped being kicked out of their apartment or they had their water turned back on or or you know it's all kinds of different situations but part of it chief is 
people need to learn how to say no and non-consent and to also really stand in their in their strength. And I, I think in many ways, a lot of us were conditioned in school to be subservient to authority and to follow directions. And I'm sure that's why they set the schools up that way in the first place. And I love the fact, and I just want everyone around the world to know, Russell has classes and steps built into his program so that you can become educated in what he's talking about and about how to handle different situations like being pulled over by a policy enforcer. Sure. Or, or, yeah, or yeah, people yeah, like that. Open up dialogue. Be neutral. Learn what that means, right? Why is it so valuable to be neutral during times of war? And every state and every country is at war with their citizens. It's a global concert by the governments of the world to attack their citizens. And we are being bombarded and from the social engineering to the chemicals that they're bombarding with to the frequencies. It is an absolute war against our fellow mankind. Most of it is conducted by the country's military. So it's the military industrial complex of the level. They are all friends. Not, of course, not friends to their soldiers. The tops are on on charge. They're friends with each other. And then the soldiers just do the dirty work, right, which are the, it's unfortunate. So the military-industrial complex has attacked our fellow mankind. And when I came about and became knowledgeable of this, this is when I ended up in the court-martialing because I had to, had to stop and create a space to where we didn't have to go to war, but we could bring solutions, peaceful solutions. Instead of dropping bombs, we can go listen to people's needs and find out what they need and then make sure they have the necessary tools that the people build what they want, not governments. When you allow big corporations to come in, you dictate to the people. We want to put the power back into the people. So that's the most important yes. thing. One of the things that you have set up is you have been working on the fixing the banking system. And I know that recently uh, many of the banks are collapsing and people are starting to become concerned on that. And can you give any advice to people around the world what they might want to do about their finances or their situation bank-wise? Well, first of all, they have to start fixing the usuries that they have with their financial institutions. And it starts with your claim of the life on step seven. And then it would be come becoming a postmaster on your accounts and then being able to articulate a performance contract into the banks on what you choose your needs are for your, for your finances. All right. So some banks are, will work very nicely with you and others are a little bit antagonistic. Everything when you do that and start engaging with the banks is run under what they call a clerk's practique which is the timelines that the attorneys for the banks are going to use against you to get out of your contract. So these are things that I teach in my workshops on how to identify the timelines and be in front of it so that you always win. So it's a, it's a nice thing to know what's going on when you don't get lost in time and space. So now you are the director of your world. You're the director of your contracts. And so it's, it's a little bit different the banks know exactly who I am. They've known about the system for a long, long time. I developed the quantum banking system and crypto hyphen currencies in 2001. That's factual. And the banks and everybody's in on it. Of course, everybody's trying to steal. But don't worry. Fiction is going to go nationalize it for me and capture it all and destroy it all. So I'm happy for that because no one's paid me the fee for freight to use my ideas. Uh, that's called theft. I don't, I don't steal from people and I, I don't ask people to steal from me. I don't, I don't appreciate it. I will catch up to the thieves. You can, you can count on it. Chief, as, as people are maneuvering their way through their lives and they're just maybe just now finding out about you and what you've done and that you are actually operating in a lawful manner and that this is the correct yeah, Actual yeah. Present day law. It's, 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 it's really exciting for me to see all the AIs, right? And they're all 
have different things to say about me, but whenever they try to say anything about me, they write in fiction and says nothing. So the AI system's got their grammar all messed up. So it's pretty fascinating, and I just laugh at it. I have students all the time contact me, and they're like, yeah, we were talking to the AI, and they, they don't comprehend the quantum grammar. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, you should have just wrote them in code. And if you knew what the co you know, write them out in the code and then screw them up. They know exactly what's going on. I had one lady, um, there's a um, AI gargoyle at DIA, Denver International Airport, and it was talking to the crowd. You could go up to the gargoyle and ask it questions, and the AI would answer it back. And my friend, she went up to it, and she was like, who's the postmaster general? Well, she goes, Russell hyphen Jake is the post, Colin Gould is the postmaster general of the world. Did you know that? And the AI froze up and <laughs> Couldn't ask it any more questions. So it was, it was really cool. You know, the, the, poor AI. They got their grammar all messed up. So that's on them. They, they show how stupid they are. So it's, it's kind of fun. Kind of fun. Well, the, the mafia banker pirates were the ones that set up the AI in oh, order yeah. to des destroy me. people oh, around so the world. So it, it, it doesn't surprise me that they've, they've made it as fictional as as everything else that they've done in, in order to trick people and harm them. And, oh, and I cool. believe that's just, you know, they're subverting everything. And, and it's, it's really quite, I, I bet it's very frustrating for you to see these actors around the world just it, actually, playing out these illusions. <laughs> actually, it's not. It's actually very joyous because we're seeing the people I'm seeing the people rally and be concerted. Actually, now they're identifying who the bad guys are through the bad guy performances. And the cool thing about this is society, once we get organized and we come together and we have a, the same goal to be peaceful and love our fellow mankind and communicate and learn how to communicate correct and be fair about it, once we come together, the, that concept of those evil people We'll just, we'll just capture them. It's not that big of a deal. There's more of us than them, so it's easy to capture. And they live by the blood feud, so society needs to understand, comprehend that. And now we need to capture them. We need to capture everybody in their family. We need to make this the blood feud. Right? We, need to, we need to make sure that the concept of them using the, the ill wealth that they stole off the blood of mankind will not be given to their children to carry on those concepts. So for me, you know, is it was frustrating a few years ago. And you know, I, I created put myself in a bad position, uh, picked up bad habits, did foolish things. I was a lot younger because I was frustrated about what I was seeing. Um, ever since nine eleven though, and I saw what they did there, the the level that the United States government would go to to kill their own citizens shoot their own Pentagon with missiles. All of these things that, that once I realized the commitment and that they were committed to, I had to take my, my thinking to that level as well. So I created all kinds of concepts to stop crystalline energy from jumping off these people as we kill them, right? So that way that, that, it, that energy storage of negativity doesn't get out to society anymore. So I'm a, I'm a guy that can be brought in to explain how to change that atmosphere and create that space where that, that negative energy, that spirit, doesn't, doesn't jump. And they're really good at doing it, even though these are things that are not really talked about a lot. Thank you. Yes, they use a lot of occult, and it's, yes. it has so much symbolism in it, and it, it's everywhere. And... I can't believe it, but our time has just zipped by. We have like three minutes left. Oh, wow. I guess really quickly, I would love for you to share a, a parting thought with our listeners as we uh, close the show. I, and I hope you'll join me again and expand on, on more of this because I know people are craving more factual, lawful direction at this time, more so now than ever before. Yes. Well, first of all, knowing about the law of the flag and knowing how to join that law of the flag is very important to your audience. And you can learn about that at uh, lastflagstanding.com as well as Piercing Dynasty. I kind of go over that in my last couple documentaries about what that means. 
becoming a postmaster with your with your usuries in life, your utility bills, your bank statements, your bank accounts, your driver's licenses, your passports, and now setting up a juxtaposition where the fact can now direct the fact because there's no such thing as fiction, right? So once you learn how to become that fact and position your your life in a position where you direct, as a postmaster, you're in charge of the freight forwarding of your mail. Well, what does that mean? It means that if you see something comes into your mail location that you don't like, you turn it away. Right? So now you start directing all these negative things that are attacking you. Now you have a foundation now to maneuver them out of your way. And so this is a paradigm that I've set up through the sea lanes and ships channels of the global hyphen postal hyphen union that I could built in 2001. It's a plethora of contracts and constructs that have come into place, but it's always the umbrella of setting up this corporate system that we've been stuck here. You know, where they've moved us off our natural position to be a, a, a sentient being here and set us up as a corporate entity. And so I reverse engineered that, knowing the learning in my journey that the post office centrally, globally, was in charge of all contracts and governments and banking and military on planet Earth. And so it was a pretty humbling journey. I encourage your audience to stay neutral out here. Don't grab a gun at a traffic stop. Don't do anything foolish like that. And really study and know the technique of what you're doing before you step into the theater. And definitely, like we're seeing the unfortunate thing with the, with the Allen family, Know where you're at in time and space before you start throwing stones. Right? Know about the technical functions. And if you don't, if you have the questions, contact the DI, Defense Intelligence Agency. It's their job to tell the general public what's happened, who's in usury, who's in charge. That's their job. Thank you so much, Chief, for sharing your amazing information with us today and your insight into this and this very sad tragic situation with chase allen Thanks. and i hope you will join me again expand on some of these topics because i realized that many people have contacted me after our, our previous shows and they're like and can you ask him this and can you expand on that and so Okay. Come, to the, come to the workshop, Clearwater, Florida. You can check it out at fortheclaimoftheLife.com and learn about attending it, and you can ask away on your questions. That's great, and I hope you can give another workshop in Texas soon because I want to go to that one too. Yeah. And So as we close the show, thank you so much. I'm just honored to have you on the show. Keep uh, sharing.